Good afternoon, Pastor David. And to you, John. Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment Unfiltered with Pastor David. And as always mentioned, and thank you guys for tuning in, that on Thursdays we look more at what you're going to be teaching on Sunday and draw out some, some teasers. And this Sunday, as you're speaking on, teaching on Mark, 7, Mark chapter 10, 17 to 31, you're looking at the rich young ruler. Mm -hmm. And as I have privy to your notes already, there were some things that drew my interest, and I think that uh, hopefully that the, our audience would be interested as well. But it it opens up, it says, now as he was going out on the road, one came running and knelt before him. Mm -hmm. So it's this rich young ruler that knows who Jesus is. He comes, and not only does he come to Jesus, but he comes running to him. Pastor, what's the significance that we miss from a Western perspective, looking in a Middle Eastern culture, when it says this one came running, especially if he's identified as a rich young ruler. Well, we know that this one who came running, his name was Juan, because it says Juan came running. <laughs> so that tells me he was from the tribe of Perez. You know? <laughs> or Reuben. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was good. Yeah, Juan came running. Uh, yeah, one came running. In the Middle Eastern culture, um, a man of dignity would would never would never run in public because they long they wore long robes and in wearing the long robe in order to run you had to lift it and in lifting it and revealing legs your legs in public that was a humiliating and a, a um, an embarrassing thing to do so right from the get-go with mark he says this young man came running and knelt before him, right? So his running would have been something that would have given the uh, given evidence of a uh, an eagerness, you know. And so this man eagerly approaches Christ. When you begin to look at the the different accounts of the same um, uh, event, you can see them in other gospels. And begin to tie them together, which I'll do on on Sunday as uh, kind of a a way of setting the the stage, if you will, setting the table for the meal. You know, you you begin to see things about him. He was young, you know. Uh, he was anywhere from twenty one to twenty eight years old. He was rich. He had great estates. When it speaks concerning the fact that he had great riches, the uh, the words great riches actually, when you look in the original language. Uh, speak of uh, many mansions he had he had uh, he was a landowner and he had a lot of wealth that that the land would have produced for him and we see things like that he was highly regarded he was a young man um, there are those commentators who believe that he may very well have been part of the uh, Sanhedrin which would have been the ruling class in terms of the um, those who made uh, um, judgments pertaining to the law of Moses. So in every way, this, this young man was very, very um, held in high regard. He was, he was very prestigious. So the fact that he's running to Christ in that way, willing to uh, humble himself, is, is quite, a, quite, a, quite a picture. You see another instance of that, someone running in the story of the prodigal son and how that when he was returning, the father, seeing him while he was yet a great distance off, came running to him. Once again, that was a picture of humiliation. And in that particular story of Messiah and the man representing, um, you know, Messiah and all, uh, the humiliation of Christ and that he, he took upon himself human flesh. So you can see that there's a picture in, uh, in Mark 10 of a young man who eagerly, um, approaches, he kneels with reverence and respect, and and he's openly openly willing to humble himself to speak to this great master. And so that's the picture you have with this this one who's referred to as the rich young ruler. But I chose to entitle this installment the rich young fool. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I because like, at oh. the end he 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 walks away from what could have been his. And so the significance that you're laying the foundation for is that typically you don't see that in the Middle East. Oh, no. Somebody who has this type of reputation as this oh, no. rich man, 
especially out in the open. I mean, Zacchaeus came to him by night, mm -hmm. this Pharisee. Mm -hmm. Now we have this unnamed ruler mm -hmm. who now comes to Jesus running to him. So right away that shows that there is some type of appearance to be hungry for something. Yeah. And, uh, and I like what you put here. There, it, there's, it's, an, it's an illustration of a man's unwillingness to trust the Lord because even though he initially appeared to be hungry for truth, in reality he wasn't. It, it seems like he showed great interest in the spiritual things. And, uh, and, but to remember that interest is not a synonym for complete trust and faith. And so what's interesting about this pastor is what is it that he wants? Well, what he claims to want and what he actually wants is revealed in the story. What he claims to, to desire is an inheritance in the kingdom of God. What, what must I do to have eternal life? How can I have, uh, have this? That's what he claims to have. But what he really wants is his riches. Because when Jesus gives to him um, the laws that he, he mentions to him, you know, those are laws that really relate to man's um, treatment of other men you know you're not to steal and not to murder and those are those are laws that pertain to our relationships with other human beings Jesus didn't even go to the first table mm -hmm. which is our, our duties to God he actually speaks to him concerning our duty to men and then when he says to him sell all that you possess give to the poor follow me you'll have riches and that's what you want you need to yield up the things that entangle you here in order that you can have the things that I'll give to you there he, he didn't have a heart for those things, and he, he went away very grieved, the scripture says. The word grieved in the original language actually speaks of someone with a frown on their face. Mm -hmm. He walked away sorrowful. He walked away bummed out. He walked away because he knew that the cost that he was asking, which was simple obedience to the things he said he's been doing all his life, <laughs> um, was greater than he was willing to, to pay. And Jesus is very intentional in drawing that out of him because, as you mentioned, it's the the commandments that Jesus says. You know the commandments. So obviously, it's Jesus knew that this man was a Jewish man that was raised in the Jewish education he was, system. He was a synagogue ruler. This is a man who was regarded in a high way. This is a man who was on again more than likely on the Sanhedrin. This was a man who made rich uh, religious decisions for the people of Israel. As young as he was, he was held in high esteem. Even even when Saul, for example, when Saul became Paul. Uh, and when Stephen, the first martyr, had had been put to death, it says that they had laid the clothing of those who were going to uh, stone Stephen at the foot of a young man named Saul. So this was somebody who had, um, you know, he had risen in the ranks and was regarded highly. He was prestigious. He was wealthy. He he had youth. He had all the things that a lot of people think you should have, except for one thing. He said, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What do I still lack? So he had an awareness of a lack. But when Jesus said, sell it all and follow me, you'll have riches in heaven. I don't want that. See, so, you know, with great difficulty do the rich enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter in. Why is that? And the men begin to puzzle amongst themselves because, because riches are normally in the Jewish economy during that time and even to this day, the Bible speaks concerning the fact that, that he will give to those he favors. He will give them riches and honor and life. He, he gives those things. This, this kid had it all. And so in the mind of the apostles, they saying, well, who then can be saved? <laughs> if he has everything and he's, he's in notch above everybody else, oh, with great difficulty do the rich in, enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because the riches hold them down. Instead, he have, instead of having an eternal vision, they, they have the vision that's that's only looking at the right now. So we'll look at that. There's we'll no, at, more, no more. No more. I, we'll, I got we'll so look many other this. questions. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stop there. Because uh, I, I'm just thinking about, and I, I've looked at these in, at your notes, and so yes, so fascinating to see how Jesus is able to draw these things that's out. That's what he does. And uh, and so fascinating to see somebody who thought everything was, happiness was in his riches, Jesus draws a spirituality out of mm -hmm. So. Well, thank you, Pastor. And again, this is going to be a good study. I'm excited for this. It's and a good portion. Yes, and, and uh, this is a great opportunity for people to invite their friends and family to come out and join us on Sundays. Every Sunday is a good opportunity. I hope they take the opportunity to do so. Come worship together. Yeah, God's they were able together. to come on Easter. Yes. So why don't you come, come on the next back. week? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I 
Yeah, tomorrow night, uh, even though the tickets are sold out, we, we have a, an event coming on with our men's barbecue. And it's do, you, be... do you think some of the men could come even if they don't eat, maybe come to the study? If you guys still want to come to the study, come. Uh, and you know what? People have extra tickets. So even if you don't have a ticket... Well, let's not give them false hope. You can watch us eat. <laughs> yeah, you can come and watch, <laughs> watch us. Watch us eat the cheeseburgers. are going to be good. Just come on out. Yeah. Come on out. Uh, we're we're going to serve dinner at 6.30. So if you got here about 7.15... Uh, just to to hear, we got something special kind yeah, of. Yeah, we'll be doing something different. Uh, and so, want to have you guys come out and join us. If you don't have a ticket uh, and you were going to go grab a bite to eat somewhere else, come afterwards. About so we're going to start worship about seven fifteen, seven thirty, and uh, we're going to have good worship with Holland Davis. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we look, but we also look forward to you guys coming out on uh, Sunday, eight thirty and ten forty five. Invite a friend. And so, Pastor, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. And you guys, thank you for tuning in. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.